brother Kazak out here try to come out here week in and week out to uh, wake up my people, the Toy Tribe, uh, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. If you ain't know, we are the chosen people of the Most High. You know the people that uh, the people that this uh, Bible is for. You know the Bible is not for the so-called white man. It's not for the Arab man. It's not for the Chinese man. This book is for the uh, twelve tribes of Israel, the sons, of, the sons and daughters of Jacob. You know, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We are the chosen people of God, and we need to come back to His law, statutes, and commandments in these last days. Book of Psalms, chapter 1 and 1 from the top. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. What's up, brother? Can I ask hey, you a question? Up? I'm going to ask you what's up, bro. All right, brother. What's your nationality, brother? Oh. All right, you an Israelite, brother. You got to repent, keep the commandments. Like it, but what was I at though? Uh, Psalms 1 and 1 from the top. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. So, you know, our delight supposed to be in the law of the Most High. We're not supposed to be walking with the counsel of the ungodly, you know, of I believe it's saying Exodus, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. So, you know, we're not supposed to be uh, following what the so-called white man doing. We're not supposed to be following what our so-called wicked family members is doing. We're supposed to be uh, having our having our delight, and, uh, having our delight in the law of the Most High and in the word of the Most High. You know, keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. Can I ask you a question? Nationality. What? So what's your nationality? Indian. Indian? Like what kind of Indian? Like, like East Indian or Native American? Native. Native? Which side is Native? What? I said which side is Native? What do you mean? Your, your father's side or your mother's side? Both. Both? So you're a true Indian or you're a five dollar Indian? $5. You a $5 Indian? Yeah. So you would be a so-called white man, right? Are you on air? Huh? Yeah, I'm on air. You scared of cameras? Uh-uh. So you a $5 Indian? Yeah. So that means you're not a real Indian then, right? I ain't so-called white man. Just know you're going into slavery according to the Bible. So yeah, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we're supposed to be having our delight in the laws of the Most High. You know, we're supposed to be keeping these laws to the best of our ability and not walking in the, uh, not walking with the counsel of the ungodly. Let me get a precept on that. Oh, block. Yeah, let me get a precept on that real quick. Go to the book of Syrac. Cause these are these are the type of people that we supposed to be walking with. We're not supposed to be walking with brothers that's uh that's dealing their people drugs, poisoning their own people. We're not supposed to be uh walking with brothers that want to uh grab bottles and drink all night, you know, and whore out our women, you know, and spread the wickedness uh throughout all the uh, land and all that. We're not supposed to be walking with them. You know, we supposed to be walking with the people that's that's meditating on these laws, statutes, and commandments. You know, people that's people that's uh striving to uh seek righteousness with the Most High. So this is the book of Syrac, chapter 37, verse 12. It says, but be continually with the godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So those are the people we're supposed to surround ourselves with. We're not supposed to surround ourselves with uh, people that's, uh, that's going to try to uh, get us to hit the blunt. You know, because you, you repented. You came back 
you came away from all of those uh all of those uh things that you used to defile yourself with so why so why continue to surround yourself with the same things that you uh trying to turn from you know it says but be continued this is our right 37 and 12 but be continually with the godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the lord who whose mind is according to thy mind so be with people that's like-minded with you you know, be with people that, that got the same mindset as you, that's on the same track that you on. You know, if you if you uh if you a brother that's trying to keep the commandments, you gotta surround yourself with other brothers that's trying to keep the commandments, cause then y'all gonna give strength to each other. Y'all gonna keep each other from falling off. You know, don't try to don't try to uh hang with people, don't try to hang with people that's uh doing something opposite of what you're doing, cause that's gonna uh that's gonna give you the strength to fall off. You know, that's gonna give you the opposite, the, the opposite of what you were trying to do, you know. If you hang with brothers, if you trying to keep the commandments, and you hang with brothers that's still in wickedness, you know you gonna be that you gonna be that next brother that's indulging in wickedness. That peer pressure gonna get on your ass, and you gonna get in, you gonna give in into it. So the Lord say, be continually with the godly man. You know, it says, but be continually with the godly man, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. So, you know, we got to be continually with uh, people that's like-minded with us. And not, not with people that's, uh, whose mind is contrary to, contrary to what we, uh, to the mission that we on. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that out real quick. And I don't really got no lesson prepared. I'm just going with the spirit. You know, wherever the spirit lead me with these, with these precepts, then that, that's where I'm going to go. But, uh, so yeah, we're going to go to the book of Proverbs because we talk about being continually with uh, people that's like-minded with you because y'all going to keep each other on the right track. You know, so that's a precept for that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. It says, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So iron sharpeneth iron, you know. You can't put you can't put uh you can't sharpen iron with wood. So you know if you iron and and you hanging around people that's wood, you know you you gotta uh they ain't gonna be able to do nothing for you. You know the only thing that can sharpen iron is iron. So you gotta you gotta stay uh you gotta stay like you gotta stay with people that's like minded with you. You know those are the only people that that you gonna be able to uh you know that that you gonna be able to um what's the uh bond with or have chemistry with. You know, because y'all on the same track, y'all got the same goal in mind. You know, y'all both trying to hear, well done, my righteous servant. You know, y'all both trying to make it to the kingdom and be and be uh, lords over ten cities, you know. Y'all trying to y'all got them same goals, so you got so y'all gonna keep each other on the right track. You see your brother falling off, you gonna tell him, hey yo, bro, you you falling off, brother. I've been I've been seeing you, brother, you ain't been wanting to do the work, you ain't been uh reading, you ain't been praying, you ain't been fasting, brother. You know what's going on? We gotta keep your fire lit, brother. You know, iron sharpened the iron. You know, if you see a brother going off or another in another case, you know, you gotta be like, hey bro, that ain't right, bro. We gotta we gotta stay on this right track. We gotta continue to serve you how by Shimmy was shot. This fight ain't over, you know. So you know that iron sharp and the iron, you gotta stay with brothers that's like minded. Brothers that's gonna check you when you're doing wrong, you know, because they don't wanna see you doing wrong. You know, because if they see you, if you if they let you do wrong, then that's gonna fall on them. You know, the blood gonna be on their hand. Let me get that in Ezekiel. Cause that's the reason that I come out here on these highways and byways in the first place. You know, I see my brothers and my sisters out here. You know, they out here messed up, out here fucked up on drugs or whatever they doing. You know, out here uh, cleaving to the other nation, cleaving to the so-called white man and all of that. You know, following these wicked holidays. You know, just uh, just abiding in wickedness. You know, I'm supposed to tell them that that's that the stuff that they doing is wrong. You know, I'm supposed to tell them that we gotta turn back to the Lord in these last days. Keep His commandments. Keep His high holy days. You know, keep His feast. You know, strive to serve the Lord with all our heart, you know, in these last days or, or get put to death, man. Because that's what it is. That's what we out here on these highways and byways for. It's the book of Ezekiel. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Block it. Uh, Ezekiel 3 and 17 it says son of man I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me 
saw the Most High, he made he made he made us a walk. He made us watchmen. You know, those of us that know this truth, we supposed to be out here. You know, giving giving um giving uh speaking life to our people. We supposed to be out here on these highways and byways, telling our people where they going off wrong. You know, telling our people that we need to come back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So the most I say, when, when he says to the wicked, you know, that they go die, we supposed to warn them. But if we don't warn them and just let them keep on going in the path that they're going without no uh without no words of correction from the uh, holy prophets or from the righteous men of the Lord, then the blood gonna be on our hands. You know, so that's why we gotta come on here on these highways and byways. You can't just keep this truth to yourself and then uh let let everybody else that's not hearing it just uh just uh get put to death because they didn't cause they didn't uh learn from their lessons, you know? Cause they didn't cause they didn't wanna uh they didn't have nobody to to uh tell them to turn to turn from their wickedness. We can't do that. That's evil. The Lord said the blood gonna be on our hands if we do that. So it's our it's our duty, it's our it's our uh, job to come out here on these highways and byways, you know, or or if you got friends that's in the truth, you know, to tell them what they doing is wrong and, and to turn back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. To get the blood off our hands, to get our hands back clean. Because this is all we doing out here, you know, to get our hands clean. Let me read that again. I mean, Salakia, verse 19. This is Ezekiel 3 and 19. It says, Yet if thou if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So if we come out here and we do and we do the job, we do what the most high tell us to do. We warn the people that's being wicked, the people that's going off, you know, tell them like, yo, bro, you better stop selling them drugs. The most high gonna put your ass to death. You know, tell them tell tell a sister, like, sister, you better stop prostituting. Most high gonna put your ass to death. Brother, you better get out that Islam. The Lord gonna put you to death. That's worshiping other gods. That's worshiping false idols. You know? So, so, uh, so you know, we gotta we gotta tell our people that. And if they don't, if they refuse to turn from their ways, you know, then uh we still got the blood off our hands because we warned them. We gave them warning from the Lord. You know, so when they so when the Lord finally put their ass to death, it's not gonna be on our hands. Our hands is clean, you know, we cleanse from the blood. to the book of Amos. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord have not done it? So, cause you know we gotta come out this mindset that uh that uh that the Lord that the Lord is all good, that God is good all the time. Cause the Lord the Lord sends evil in the city. You know somebody die in the city, somebody get killed. It's a mass, it's a school shooting or something like that. The Lord did that, man. The Lord sent them evil spirits down to uh to corrupt whoever mind that did to do that, to commit those wicked acts, man. So we gotta come out this mindset that the Lord is all good, you know, cause the Lord is sent evil. The Lord will judge you real quick, man, in the snap of a finger. The Lord will send judgment upon your ass. Verse seven, it says, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the, that's the, that's why the prophets uh, is out here on these highways and byways. We warning our people to come away, to come out of the ways of Babylon, come out of the ways of America, you know, turn from their wickedness, because the Lord is getting ready to destroy this place. You know, the Lord is getting ready to uh to cause massive death uh in, in World War III, man, and it's coming quick. You might not think it's coming, but it's coming, you know. The Lord says the Lord reveals his secrets to the prophets first. And he sends them out on these highways and byways, you know, to wake up his people, to warn them from their wicked ways, like we just said in Ezekiel. You know, to get the blood off our hands so they get that warning so they so they get a chance to repent and turn from their wicked ways but most of them don't even do it you know they want to stay in their wickedness they want to stay in their christianity they want to stay in their 
they Islam, you know. They want to stay in their homosexuality. They want to stay in whatever they're doing. Last days, 
go through them instead of city and find them and set a mark on them. It says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Verse 5. And to the others he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your ears, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utter, I mean, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man whom is a mark. So the Most High is telling you, telling, telling, uh, telling these angels, you know, to go through the midst of the city and don't kill it. Don't kill the people that, uh, that got the mark on them. Kill everybody that's not signed the crime. Kill everybody that's okay with being at this lower state. Kill everybody that want to uh, stay under the so-called white man. Kill everybody that want to continue selling drugs to their people. Kill everybody that still want to be prostitutes. Kill everybody that still want to be homosexual. Kill everybody that's, that's doing whatever, man, that's wicked, man. Kill everybody that still want to eat pork. Kill everybody that don't want to keep my commandments. You know, the Most High is saying that in these last days. And that's what's going to happen. A lot of bodies going to drop dead in these last days because don't nobody want to serve the Most High. Don't nobody want to be righteous. Don't nobody want to do nothing. Everybody want to smoke weed all day. Everybody want to get drunk. Everybody want to uh, pop pills, pop molly, sell Oreos and do all that shit, whatever the fuck they doing, you know. Everybody want to do all that. But don't nobody want to strive for righteousness. Don't nobody want to hear the word of the Lord. So it says, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then, then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. So the most high says, slay utterly old and young. You know, he don't got no respect of person. You know, if you if you being wicked, he gonna kill you and your child. You know, he gonna kill your grandma. He gonna kill your wife. He gonna kill anybody, you know, anybody that he not pleased with. He gonna put death upon them, you know. And I pray that he do it because I'm tired of seeing our people in this lower state. You know, I'm tired of seeing the oppression of the so-called white man. I'm tired of seeing our people hooked on drugs. I'm tired of seeing everything, all of these abominations. You know, that's why I'm trying to be out here signing the crime. I'm trying to tell my people that they need to turn from their wicked ways, but don't nobody want to do that, man. Everybody want to turn up and party all the goddamn time. Like, that's all we capable of doing. Micah. Is that what I want? No, I think it's Nahum. Lock it. Or it might be Micah. I think it's Micah 3. Okay. So this is the book of Micah, chapter 3, verse 8. It says, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Most High, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. I said we gotta be full of power and the spirit. I mean, how about Shimmy? I was trying to come out here and tell our people where they going wrong at, you know? Tell our people what uh what what's how they transgressing the Lord, how they transgressing the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high. And tell them that they need to repent and turn from their wicked ways. You know? The most high is telling us that. We, we gotta come out of these abominations, stop committing these abominations, and, and uh and, and turn back to righteousness, turn back to the turn back to the Lord in these last days, you know, and stop cleaving to the other nations. Keeping these commandments, you act like you're refusing to hear. You, 
if, if anything, you hate the Lord, man. You know, because to love the Lord is to keep the commandments. Like I say in 1 John, I believe it's chapter 4. It might be chapter 2. But to love the Lord is to keep the commandments. To know the Lord is to keep the commandments. You know? So how, how do you know the Lord? How do you love the Lord if you're not keeping the commandments? You know, you're just out here. You're just out here. You love Satan. You know? You love the so-called white man because he don't want to tell you to do what you want. He don't want to tell you do as you please, do as thou wilt. You know, he don't want to push that agenda on you. That's what you love. You don't love the Most High because the Most High don't give you no choice. He said keep his commandments or die. You know? So this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 11. It says, But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. You know, they refused to listen to the word of the Lord. They pull away the shoulder. They turn quick. They walk away quick. You know, they don't want to hear the words of the Most High. They, uh-uh, get that out of my ear. You know, I ain't trying to hear that. I want to stay wicked. You know, I love this darkness. You know, I love this darkness rather than light. You know, like Yahweh Shah said, because they men's deeds were evil. They love darkness rather than light. Paraphrase. You know, that's how our people is. That's why we got sent into slavery in the first place. Let's go back to the book of Amos. Chapter 5 and verse 10. It's Amos 5 and 10. It says, They hate him that rebuke in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So they hate, they hate when we come out here and tell them that they need to turn from their abominations, that what they're doing is sin, you know, that what they're getting ready to do is sin. You know, they hate that. They hate that we tell them that they can't buy on the Sabbath day. They hate that we tell them that they can't eat pork no more. They hate that we tell them that they can't be homosexual. They hate that we tell them that uh, they get, that they got to wear fringes, you know. They hate that we tell them to stop uh, celebrating Christmas, to stop celebrating Thanksgiving, to stop celebrating all the white man holidays. They hate that we tell them that, you know. They hate that because they hate the Lord. So they hate us automatically because we bringing out the word of the Lord in truth and in sincerity. So they hate that automatically. It says they hate him that rebuke him in the gate and they abhor him that speak of uprightly. You know, they abhor us. They hate us. Abhor is another word for hate. So they hate us that speak of uprightly. They hate us because we coming out with that righteous spirit. We coming out to correct them in their ways, but they don't want to listen to it. You know? Them and don't nobody like being corrected. They don't like it. They hate it. They're like, brother, you can't tell me what to do. You can't judge. You can't judge. God, only God can judge me. First off, that's not nowhere in the Bible. You know, Tupac said that. You know, Tupac said only God could judge him. And Tupac, that showed that Tupac ain't even know what the hell he was talking about. Because it say the righteous go judge the earth. The saints go judge the earth. They, they go judge the world, paraphrasing. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and grab that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 9. It says, Open thy mouth, judge righteously. Plead the cause of the poor and needy. So the most I say open our mouth, judge righteously. He didn't say that we can't judge. You know, he didn't say he didn't say that only he could judge, because people like to say only God could judge them. The most I just said, come out here and open your mouth, judge righteously. You know, tell their people, tell your people where they're going off wrong. Tell them that they need to stop sinning. Tell them that they need to stop cleaving to the other nations. Tell them that they need to stop doing drugs. You know, tell them that they need to stop being prostitutes and whatever they're doing. You know, tell them that. You know, speak uprightly. Speak righteousness to the people. Don't just let them, uh, like we read in uh, Ezekiel, you know, if you don't speak, if you don't get them that warning, then the blood gonna be on your hands. So the most I'm telling us to come out here and get the blood off our hands. It says, open thy mouth, Proverbs 31 and 9, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy.
chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the Most High said, Repent, you know, that your sins be blotted out. Because that's the only way that you're going to get forgiven is if you repent and turn from your wicked ways, you know. That's the only way that you're going to receive eternal life and that salvation if you repent, you know, in the eyes of the Most High, call on the call on the Lord and you got to be an Israelite first of all to repent you know you can't just be a so-called white man or East Indian man or whatever you know what up brother yeah. want you stay on the block brother uh -uh. you don't stay on Florence no more no uh -uh. but let me ask you a question brother. Oh, you be on the yeah brother let me ask you a question all right brother you gotta repent brother you're an Israelite brother Like I just said, man, you know, you try to bring out the word of the Lord to the people and they turn away. You know, they don't want to listen to it. They keep walking. You know, that's how they do. Our people was wicked. They want to indulge in wickedness. But I, if I would have said, brother, I'm finna roll up, the brother would have stayed right here. You know, if I would have said, brother, I got this, I got that, brother would have stayed right here and would have tried to solve what I was talking about. You know, but our people, they evil, man. They wicked. You know, that's all they want to indulge in. Brother, you got a minute for the word of the Lord? Ain't nobody good, brother. You got two minutes, brother. All right, brother, you're an Israelite, brother. You got to repent, brother. All right, brother, you got to repent, brother. See, don't nobody want to listen. Don't nobody got time for the word of the Lord in these last days. Everybody too busy for the most high. That's why they ass gonna get put to death. You know, ain't no excuse. You turning your ear from the Lord, ain't no excuse you gonna get put to death. no sense in praying if you're going to turn your ear from hearing the word of the Lord. If you're going to turn your ear from keeping the commandments, ain't no sense in even praying, man. Let me get that real quick. Because what the Lord going to help you for if you can't even do something that, that, uh, that he's telling you to do? This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So you turn your ear from hearing, the, from hearing the law, from hearing the word of the Lord and keeping the commandments, your prayer is going to be an abomination. You're going to be praying that the Lord going to be, y'all hear something? You know, the Lord ain't going to be trying to hear that shit. He ain't going to be trying to hear none of that. You know, if you ain't keeping the law, and the commandments, he ain't going to hear your prayer. I believe that's in the book of John. Is it John 9? John 9 and 31. It says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of if the Most High and do of his will, him he heareth. So we know the Most High don't hear sinners. The Most High don't hear people that's not keeping his commandments. The Most High don't hear people that's uh that's uh selling their people drugs every day. The Most High don't hear people that's uh that's um that uh that want to uh, commit all these abominations. He don't hear all of that. You know? The Most High only want to hear he only go hear you if you keep his commandments. His angels is watching 24-7, so they know, so he know if you're keeping the commandments. You know, the eyes of the Lord are, are uh, what did it say, are brighter than the sun. So that means he see everything, you know. I believe it's in Luke. this precept bear with me Israel brother you got a minute for the word of the Lord two minutes brother all right brother don't nobody got time don't nobody love the most high in these last days but that's all right though most often uh we're gonna check all they ass in a minute I found it. Had to do some flipping though. But uh, this is the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. It says, And why call ye me 
Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. So why are you calling on the Lord? Why are you steady calling on the Lord, getting on your knees, but you're not doing nothing he say? You trying to get the Lord get you out of these get you out of this situation. You know, you calling on the Lord to help you pay this rent. You calling on the Lord to help you pay your phone bill. You calling on the Lord to help you pay your car note. You calling on the Lord to uh help you uh fix your car. You calling on the Lord for whatever for that new pair of shoes. You calling on the Lord to uh to help you get your uh to get your money straight. You know, but you're not doing nothing the Lord say. You're not keeping none of the Lord's commandments. You know, but you want to call on the Lord for every little thing. You only call on the Lord when you need something. You know? The most I don't like that, man. That's one-sided. What it say? What it say? Uh, that's a false balance. So let me read that again. It says, and why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So why you calling on the Lord every time, but you're not doing nothing he say? Maybe if you do what he say, the Lord gonna start responding to what uh to what you uh requesting. You know, the Lord go you gonna start seeing your life get better because you're doing what the Lord asking you to. You know, you keeping the commandments. You know, you trying you trying to be righteous. You turning from your wicked ways. You repenting. You know. The Lord gonna start responding to you. The Lord gonna start showing you. The Lord gonna start showing you His nice side instead of His evil side. But if not, you know, if you just following, if you just stand in wickedness and trying to call on the Lord, He ain't gonna respond. That's a false balance. You know, it got it got to be balanced with the Lord. Let's get that in Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. It says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So a false balance is an abomination to the Most High. You know, if, you, if you're not doing nothing he, that he say, and the Lord doing all of these things for you, you know, the Lord ain't going to be trying to hear that. You know, the Lord ain't got time for that. You know, you got to be keeping the commandments, and then the Lord the Lord go uh, fulfill your request, Lord willing. You know, you can't just be not doing nothing for the Lord, living for yourself, Fulfilling your own pleasures every day and then calling on the Lord. He ain't gonna be trying to do nothing for you Because you're not doing nothing that he said. That's a false balance This is the book of Romans This is the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 21 it says, but to Israel, he saith, all the day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So the Most High say all day long, he stretched forth his hands. All day long, he sent help to a disobedient people. He sent help to people that don't even want to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. He sent help to people that, that uh, still want to kill their brothers. You know, he sent help to people that still want to uh, poison their brothers, selling them drugs and all that. He sent help to people that still want to defile their bodies, you know, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. You know, doing crack, doing whatever they doing. The Most High said help to all of them people, but they don't do nothing that he say. You know? So it say, but to Israel he saying, all the day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Because we're disobedient and gainsaying people. From, from when we came out of Egypt all the way up to now, we still that same damn people. We still, we still hard-headed Israel. You know? We still them people that can't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You know? We still want to cleave unto the oppressor. We still want to uh, stick our head all the way up the white man ass, you know, and not not cleave to our own people. That's why we still getting shot in these hoods, man. That's why we still getting oppressed, you know. That's what's going on. So until we get right, the Most High ain't gonna be messing with us, man. The Most High ain't gonna be trying to hear nothing that we got to say. This is the book of Proverbs. What's that, chapter 30? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, and verse 12. It says, There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. So our people, they pure in their own eyes, but they ain't washed from their filthiness. 
everybody be like, you want you want to hear the word of the Lord? I'm good, brother. I'm straight. I'm good, brother. That's what they say. They peer in their own eyes. They think they ain't doing nothing wrong. You know, they think they too good for the word of the Most High. You know, they peer in their own eyes, but they still ain't washed from their filthiness. You know, they still wicked. They still them same damn wicked people that they was earlier, that they was when they was little, that they was back in the wilderness, that they was when they was in Egypt. We still them same wicked ass people. You know, we that generation that the Lord is talking about. You know, we that disobedient and gainsaying people. So let me read that again. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 30 and 12. It says, there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet it's not washed from their filthiness. So we not washed from our filthiness, but we act like we pure. You know, in our eyes, we ain't did nothing wrong. In our eyes, eating pork is okay. In our eyes, buying on the Sabbath day is just fine. You know, in our eyes, prostituting our daughters, ain't nothing wrong with it. You feel me? You know, that's how our people is. You know, but what? We still ain't washed from our filthiness. You know, we gotta come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments and repent. You know, repent and keep the commandments to the best of your ability. Now this will be my last one. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter one, verse 16. It says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil. So we gotta wash ourselves, make ourselves clean. You know, put away our evil doings. You know, stop smoking weed, stop smoking cigarettes. You know, stop doing all of these drugs. Stop prostituting, stop being pimps. You know, stop selling drugs. You know, keep the commandments. Stop shaving your beard. You know, wear fringes. You know, raise up your child in the words of the Lord. You know, keep the commandments to the best of your ability. That's what we gotta do in these last days. We gotta wash ourselves and make ourselves clean. You know? It says, put away your evil doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil. We gotta cease to do evil in these last days. You know, we gotta turn away from our wicked ways and repent, Israel. That's what time it is. It's not time to party. It's not time to turn up and engage in folly all day. You know, it's time to come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments, you know, so the Most High can destroy our enemies and get, up off, get us up off this wicked ass nation. Destroy this Babylon the Great and send us back to the wilderness where we belong so we can be under the uh, spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Now, this will be my last one for real, for real, this time. Last days. So with that being said, I'm going to be Israel, the hearty shalom.